In this video we're going to cover provisioning the system in the Installer Toolkit application. Once you've created your Enlighten account and created your new system in the ITK, you're ready to move on to the next steps in the ITK. Just open up the app and update your data by dragging the screen down. Click on the new system you created and proceed with the next steps in the configuration process. We've completed step 1, which was activating the system, so now we're ready to move on to step 2, which is specifying the devices in the system and creating the array. The first thing we recommend you do is connect your ITK app to the Envoy using the AP mode on the Envoy. To do this, press the uppermost button on the Envoy to launch AP mode and select the Envoy from the Wi-Fi options on your mobile device. At this point, you will see that there's no internet connection on the Envoy, but that's normal. We'll come to that later when we connect to the local Wi-Fi router. Back in the ITK app, we now need to specify the devices on our system. This is step 2 in the process. Click on Devices and Array and fill in the details. In this example, we've got three microinverters, one Envoy and a Q-Relay. The Q-Relay is required in some countries but not in the UK. Click on Continue and the next step is to add the Envoy serial number to your system. You can do this manually by copying it off the sticker on the Envoy or just scan it in directly using the ITK app as we're doing here. You then need to select the correct grid profile for your region and or country and click Done. The ITK will then synchronize with the Envoy over Wi-Fi and when that's complete you can move on to creating the array. The easiest way to do this, since you're connected to the Envoy, is to let the Envoy do the work. Click on Scan Microinverters on the next screen, scroll down to Powerline Scan Auto and click on PLC Scan. The Envoy will then communicate with the ITK app and update the devices in the system. When the scan is complete, you should check that all the devices have been found, and in this example three microinverters and a Q-Relay have been found, and then click the back arrow at the top of the screen to proceed with the next step. You will now see that step 4 is complete, and the Envoy is connected to the ITK app. Step 3 in the process allows you to specify tariff and battery storage information. In this example we're skipping this because we don't have any batteries on the system. Click on step 5 to start provisioning your devices. To do this, we will need to connect the ITK and the Envoy to Enlighten through the local network. As you can see here, for the moment, we're only connected to the Envoy with no internet access. So now you need to select your local network from the drop-down list, enter the correct password and wait for the connection to be established. We can now see that the Envoy is connected to both the ITK and Enlighten through the internet. Click on Start Provisioning to continue. When this is complete, you will next need to configure your meters for both production and consumption. You have options for single phase, two phase or three phase setups. In this example, we're using a single phase setup, so we'll click on L1. We may need to wait a few minutes to see the production coming off the PV system and when that's the case we can check the box to confirm the PV system is on and click Next. We need to wait until the production level corresponds to what we'd expect from the system at the current time of day and when we're happy with that we can move on. The next step is to switch off the PV circuit breakers to check that the production is zero and the system is correctly configured if that's the case, we can check the box and enable the production meter. Make sure you leave the PV breakers off for now. You can now configure the consumption meter and as before specify the phase type. You then need to select whether you want to measure consumption with or without solar, depending on where you have placed the CTs. In the vast majority of cases, this will be between the PV system and the breaker box, as in the current example, so we're going to select Load with Solar. Click Next, and you should see the consumption load appear. You need to switch the PV breakers off, and check that the load indicated is close to the actual consumption in the home at that moment, and that indicated on the home meter. 
Check the box to confirm this is the case and that the PV breakers are off and click Next. Now we're going to add a significant known load, such as a heat gun for example, to check if the CTs are measuring correctly. When we plug in a known load, as you can see here, the load builds up to what we would expect. If the load does correspond to what you would expect for your installation, click on Next. If it doesn't, you need to check the CTs are installed correctly and the arrow is pointing from the PV system or the grid to the breaker box. For details, please watch the video on installing the CTs. Once you're happy the load is correct, the next step is to switch the PV system back on again so you're adding PV production. You'll need to wait at least 5 minutes for it to start production, then check if the consumption load starts going down as expected. There's a timer you can start to help check the 5 minute wait period. As the timer counts down, you should see that the consumption load, or the power that is being pulled off the grid, progressively decreases as the electricity is used from the PV system. And if this corresponds to what you would expect, then the system is correctly configured. In the case of a larger PV installation, you may even see the reading move from importing power from the grid to exporting it. Once you are happy with the readings, click Next and confirm that they are correct. You can then enable the consumption meter. Finally, once you click back to the summary screen, the ITK app will update everything and you will see an overall report come up on the screen, which of course you can print or email. One final step you can perform, step 7, is to check for noise on the power line. Click on Power Line Communications Noise Detection to do this. You will see a real-time chart that displays all the communications on the installation with a grey area indicating the frequencies used by Enphase to communicate with the various devices. The two horizontal lines will allow you to see the level of noise on Enphase communications when the blue lines are above the top horizontal line, there's a high level of noise, and when the blue lines are below the bottom horizontal line, noise is weaker. Ideally, the blue lines should be within the two horizontal lines. Please refer to the Enphase manual to correct noise if you see that there is a clear anomaly.